Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for checking out another video of my Lexus IS300 turbo build. Uh, still lots to go, but in this video we're going to be doing a uh, center console removal for a shifter assembly replacement. Mine broke uh, at the linkage, so I got to replace that, so we'll be showing you how to do that. Uh, as well, I am uh, adding a fitting to my turbo housing to uh, basically connect to my boost solenoid. So something necessary, that'll be happening as well. We'll be uh, drilling and tapping for that. And also, uh, we got the bumper off. We're gonna be checking out some fitment for the intercooler and some other coolers, the trans cooler. We're gonna do a power steering cooler. Um, and there's gonna be a little bit of fabricating for that. So here we go, check it out, enjoy. All right, today I'm here with my uh, turbo housing. I am going to put a fitting in there for uh, the boost solenoid. I'm gonna put it about right here. Uh, what I'm using is a fourth hose end and an eighth MPT end here. We're gonna drill right there. I'm using a 11, or I'm sorry, 21 60 fourths uh, drill bit is the size, but we are gonna start with a smaller hole to begin with. All right, so we got the hole drilled and we just sprayed a little lubricant on there before we get the uh, threads tapped. Okay, got the hole threaded and we're just gonna put some PF, PTFE tape on it, but it'll go in just like that. It'll be nice and easy. And we'll call that portion of things done. Okay, got the turbo all put back. And as you can see, I got the new fitting right there. Good to go for the uh, Mac Boost solenoid. So that'll be one of the next things that gets tackled here. Okay, so the next thing on the list is I have to replace my uh, shifter assembly. Basically in transportation, when the motor was out, uh, the linkage to the transmission was still dangling. So when we backed the car out, it kind of broke the linkage here and made it unable to shift. When you put it into gear, this piece wouldn't move right here. So it got busted probably somewhere up here. And so it needs to be replaced, so we have to take the center console out of the car. And in order to do that, there's a little felt piece right here, pretty dirty, but gets pulled out. Those two bolts get pulled. And the boot here for the e-brake, there's some latches on it, uh, some clips. That needs to come out as well. You can see the clips here for it. Be careful that you don't pry that too hard and break it out. And then there's also little slots right here that you could use like a flathead for to pry this up and that lifts the whole lighter and ashtray area and then you got about three connectors down there that need to be uh, disconnected in order to pull this whole piece out and that is the start of getting this center console out all right the next thing that has to take place is the traction buttons and the heater buttons for the seats it has to get pulled out uh, it just basically snaps out you just have to get underneath here and find a good spot where you can pull and then from there you'll just have to disconnect all the connections for the traction and the and the heaters and that part will come out okay next thing here is we have to take two screws off There's one right here and one right there and there's actually two screws that are gonna be sorry right down here hard to see but they got caps on them and we'll pop those off. And then there's two screws back there. So once all those come off, we should be able to pull this off. Okay, so once you get all the bolts taken off here, uh, you're gonna wanna reach from the back side here and lift up. And if this is the first time having your console pulled, it will be a very snug fit down here. So you gotta make sure that you just wiggle and be patient. Don't break it out, it will come out. And before it can fully pull out, you have to disconnect that electrical connection right there in order to get the whole console out. Okay, so from this point on, you've got uh, four bolts here to undo, what is that, a 10 or 12? 10. A 10 millimeter, you got one on each corner. And once those come off, the shifter assembly should pull right out and we can put the new one in place. So actually, there's two connection points here electrical connectors that have to be uh, undone before you can officially pull the shifter out. Okay, so the old shifter assembly is out. And just to show you exactly what I was talking about, 
this piece right here just kind of flims around all by itself without the stick shift engage. So that is busted. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna have to do before the transfer is get this little bit of assembly moved over to here, which is relatively easy. We just gotta pull this pin out and just transfer everything over. So that's gonna happen. Okay, new shifters in place, four bolts to go down. Uh, there was also the connectors. Uh, basically, you're just reversing your steps to get everything back in place. Uh, one thing I did leave off was the uh, cigarette lighter and ashtray part. Uh, I'm taking this chrome ring and I'm gonna strip it and paint it black before that goes back on, just try to eliminate some chrome. I'll probably replace this with something darker. And yeah, just to try and get all the chrome out uh, onto the next thing. So we took the bumper off. We're about to uh, test fit the intercooler, see where we're at with that. Uh, and we kinda already got ahead of ourselves. We took the crash bar off and we're getting ready to put the mount on and see how the intercooler works and how it'll stack up to that there. Okay, so in order for this intercooler to work, we're gonna have to make some cuts right here and follow it all the way up. And we actually just twisted this piece of shit off. That uh, was a mounting tab for the grill, but that'll come off as well. So it's not entirely a bolt-on kit. There is some modifications needed to be done. This is the first that I have come across. We'll see what else happens in the future here. Okay, this is where things sit as of now. Went ahead and took a grinder and made my cut right there. That's gonna be necessary for the intercool to fit. Um, another thing too that we have to do is get longer bolts, about, I'd say a half inch longer than this. That way, the, uh, the actual uh, intercooler mount right there will bolt on and fit. A uh, couple other things that need to be done, we just gotta relocate the uh, power steering line here. I'm gonna take this hard line out and I'm gonna mount my uh, old transmission cooler uh, as a uh, power steering cooler now and it'll go right here and I'll just route new hose straight to there and that should be good but we're gonna call it a day and get on board with this thing later on. Okay so that's currently how the car sits at the moment. Uh, got a few things to do. Gotta get some longer bolts. Uh, Got to paint some brackets and also find and source a uh, new trans cooler. Um, trying to figure out if I'm going to do one big one on the left side of the condenser or if I'm going to do two little ones. It's just a matter of fitment. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, keep checking back. Videos on the way. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.